Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Super Mario Galaxy. I am Shadow Productions. And I am Paper Mario Guy. And in the last episode, we had a big discussion on game review. We're talking about padding and, uh, I don't know. Holding your hand. Holding your hand game. and stuff like that as we went through some Freeze Flame as well as uh, some Dusty Dune. But in this episode, we're going to be heading to a new galaxy, Gusty Garden Galaxy with mission number one, Bunnies in the Wild. So this is taking kind of a dramatic turn from the previous two galaxies that we've been visiting, which are uh, rather dark, I guess. You know, Dusty Dune isn't exactly the most cheerful. It's very uh, dry and you know, bland. Yes. Uh, you know, and Freeze Flame, you know, was a good balance, but they're two extremes, and uh, they're not exactly the most uh, exuberant levels in the world. This one seems very colorful and peaceful and bright. Yeah. And has probably one of the most popular uh, themes in uh, Galaxy or Galaxy 2. Um, and I personally know this. This is will forever be stuck in my head as the theme of the final... No, you poop! <laughs> you poop? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I pressed A. But uh, this theme will forever be in my head as the final uh, galaxy of Galaxy 2, which is um, oh, called uh. Grandmaster Galaxy. <laughs> and uh, for those of you who have played Super Mario Galaxy 2, uh, you know what is in you know Grandmaster Galaxy and why this might be stuck in my head and embedded as that theme. So is that. So lots of one-ups. Uh, lots of star bits. Definitely should press A again. That's a great idea. No. Well, I can now because I'm over here, but not that piranha plan out for really no reason. And see where this brings us to our It death. drops you into the... <laughs> it does. I was being sarcastic. Okay. Um, cool. <laughs> take this one up, but you have to die. <laughs> Alright, well, at least I got a one up, you know. <laughs> that would be a really cruel... Cruel joke if they just like <laughs> killed you. Cut this vine and just killed you. I figured it was gonna lead me to somewhere, but no, just to my death. That's where it's gonna lead me. To. Um, hopefully one of these places. One of the. All right. Can I look? Where are you leading me to? You're leading me to somewhere good. <laughs> I don't think that's supposed to happen. What? Just have these vines that lead you to your death. Well, I don't know, that one certainly did- Whoa! <laughs> it caught me before I could even do anything. Alright, more Pokey Babies. Um, but one, one thing I would actually, uh, you know, one example, one really, really big example that I cannot believe that I didn't bring up last episode when we were talking about padding, um, is the Mario Party games. And you may be wondering what I'm talking about, but... If you play Mario Party 2, and you play Mario Party 3, and then you play Mario Party 4 and 5, where they have the, in, you know, increased graphics and stuff like that because it's on the GameCube, notice how many unnecessary cutscenes there are in those games that were really not necessary um, in comparison to Mario Party 2. And you can just, you can tell how much of a faster paced game Mario Party 2 is in comparison to Mario Party 3. I mean, uh, Mario Party 4. Jump on his head! Alright, cool. Uh, at least I didn't get hurt. But And those are games where you really don't want to, it to go slow. You want it to go as quickly as possible because you want it to be your turn and you want to play the minigame. You don't want to sit there and see this cutscene every time you get an item or... You know, land on a space yeah. or, you know, cross past a bank, you know. So it, it can get kind of annoying. Boing. And this game has it too, you know, there's no reason why it should take so long for you to get settled back in to, uh, uh, like the groove, like, like when you get a star and you come down, like that cutscene's longer than it was in, mm -hmm. in Super Mario 64 when you got a star or, you know, sunshine. And you have to like scroll through this dialogue. And yeah. But anyway. That was a pretty easy star, you know, that bunny. It was quite easy to get. And that's the first star of Gusty Garden, so... Awesome. 
I'd like a 3D Mario game kind of almost in the style of Banjo-Kazooie where you could just run in and without having to exit the world each time, you could just go in and get all the power stars. Yeah. Yeah, no. Banjo-Kazooie is... That, again, Banjo-Kazooie is another great game, you know, because of it, uh, of its, uh... Because everything that, that happens in Banjo-Kazooie, um, is done perfectly. Like, it has balance down, like, like, no other. Like, it, you know, it's just, it just has that, uh, that factor to it that doesn't make it seem overbearing, but also doesn't make it feel, um, underwhelming, you know, it, it has that balance thing where it's just like, everything is given to you, you know, right off the bat, and you can choose where you want to go, but some, you know, jigsaw pieces are made a little bit more obvious than others, so you can kind of get a feel as to where some are, and then as you're doing other missions, maybe you could think about, you know, something that you, you saw earlier, and it becomes a little bit more clear to you. And you can really just, like, jump in at any point and just play without having to scroll through all this dialogue. Yeah, I think you... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> spun a little too much. But... I'm sure Banjo 2 is the same, but I haven't really played all that much of that game. You should ask Caboose if he can borrow it. He owns it. Does he really? I'm pretty sure he does. Let's see about that. I, like to that game. I, I actually saw a copy at Comic Con, but it was like it was like in the box, so it was like fifty five dollars, sixty dollars. And I mean, I'm a fan oh, did of I Banjo. Do the same thing I did last I time. think you might have. And I mean, I'm a I'm a, well. Uh, see if you can go one more time. Oh no. What am I doing? I pay more attention. No, That's I mean, actually I one of the things that I might have, uh, uh, that I was thinking about trying to see if I could find at uh, PAX East. Yeah, I'm sure you'll definitely be able to find it. I mean, you can find it on Amazon, too. Yeah. Or maybe not Amazon, but eBay, for yeah, sure. definitely. I mean, I wouldn't pay, like, 50 bucks for it, but... Oh, I, didn't, I didn't even mean to do it that time. Can you turn around, Mario? Go back. No, no, I'm sure you're fine. Just go one more time. Go. Uh, well, well no, that wasn't no. a very nice jump at all. Well, because you weren't in the wind current. Okay, well, this is pretty bad. I'm not gonna lose again. Get it this time. <sighs> but I think it'd just be a bit more satisfying to actually. <laughs> you almost died. <laughs> you almost died. What is going again? on? <laughs> But to actually like, hunt it down and find it. Yeah, then rather than just going online and... Alright, I think you might have got it this time. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Jesus but, Christ. I don't know, there's there's just something, you know, it's one of the as, as a as a let's player and as a video game enthusiast, um it, it's one of those things I I like looking at games because Pa more than more so than movies and more so than music there's uh, there's a lot that goes into a video game that can be um, analyzed and you know the thought process between you know for a video game is so complex and you know everything that is put into a video game is put in for a reason and you know certain gameplay choices are made for a reason and uh, you know, whether it be music, or whether it be gameplay, or just, like, the creative part of things, you know. I don't know, it's one of the things that I love about uh, video games, and, you know, I, Galaxy may be my least favorite of the 3D Mario games, but uh, more so than any of the other ones, and maybe because I have played the other ones, it makes me think a lot, uh, and I like that about this game, because, you know, I'm enjoying the gameplay, obviously, but... At the same time, you know, I get to look at, you know, the, the things that they put into the game because this game makes me think, every time I play it, why it is my least favorite of the 3D Mario games. Um, and, and I don't know, it's just, it, it, it it's, it's weird. It, it's weird, but it's good. And 
because I have the whole Paper Mario game thing that I'm working on. When I play a game, I could like almost kind of try to think from the developer's point of view and like think. Oh, was, was I supposed to? No, no I you could have gone. I could have. Yeah. That might have been like a special secret star or something. But like when I'm playing through a level, I could like kind of think, oh, how'd they do this? Or what were they thinking when they made this? Just kind of have that perspective because I myself, I'm not a big game developer or anything. And I'm sure it's completely different when they're designing the Mario game, but still, it's game design. But one of the things that you know is great about it is when you when you finally have the game design down, and when you finally have the gameplay down, you know the two probably the biggest core elements of it. You get to then work on the creative side of things, like the most fun, you know. Once you get past the monotonous work, then you get to really truly enjoy, you know, the game. You think it's, this is a perfect section to be bringing this up, because you have a section like that where you have gusty gardens. So obviously you want to try to think of garden things, and you know, you think of trees, and you think of bushes, and you just think of, you know, the fact that, you know, there's a bunch of trees that grow fruit, you know, so you put a, a few apple planets in, and that, you know, that's cool, and it spices things up, and then you think, you know, how can they traverse from apple planet to apple planet, because you could just jump from them, or, you know, have a, have a, have a giant worm, and, you know, it gives, uh, it gives uniqueness to it, so, there's, I don't know, I don't know if I would ever necessarily want to go into a uh, video game, like the video game industry myself, it, we, you know, it's one of those things where I don't really know anything about it, which is why it kind of turns me off. Like, I don't really know how to do anything that, you know, goes into making a game, which is why I'm not truly interested into it. But, you know, one of the things that is kind of a pulling factor is I play games like this, and I play games like Paper Mario and, you know, these classic games that I talk about in my Let's Play videos, and I think, man, how great would it be to create a game like this and... You know, to have people 15, 20 years down the line analyze why I did something in a game. And I think I think that would be a satisfying feeling beyond anything else. I would definitely say that the best part of designing a game for me is the level design and, like, laying the whole thing out, whereas the whole coding thing and, like, the programming everything, it's very boring and monotonous and annoying trying to get everything to work the way you want it to. It is very satisfying when it finally does work the way you want it to. That's probably one of the most satisfying things when you're making a game, but I'd say definitely the most fun part would be putting everything together and then testing it out. I mean, I think of a, a game like Super Meat Boy, oh, which yeah. is a very difficult game, and I think I've talked about it a little bit, but uh, it's a very difficult game, but I just think about how much fun it must have been trying to make it as difficult as it, as they did, you know, saying, thinking to themselves, do we really need to put another buzzsaw in here? And then a the guy next to him going, oh, put another, put two, put two. <laughs> Get three of them in there. <laughs> you know? Put a conveyor belt between them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, like, I mean, it must have been, you know, some of the most fun thing to do, you know, that, that process. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that. I actually downloaded the demo to Super Meat Boy last night because I was bored and I had played some N Plus before that. And I pretty much beat all the levels. They weren't really that bad because the demo, but I'm definitely going to buy the full game when I get Microsoft points for Christmas. I don't know, it just seems like it's an incredibly fun, very difficult game. Yeah, very fast paced. Yes, very fast paced. It seems. I don't know, it's different from N Plus. It seems like you have to actually build up momentum in N Plus, whereas Super Meat Boy, you can just kind of hold a button down and sprint at like, the speed of light. Yeah, and then, you know you have a bunch of different characters that go at different speeds and have different things, which you didn't really know, I don't think. Yeah. But there is a character uh, called Bit Trip Commander from, I guess, the Bit Trip series, and uh, like he has a little bit of a difference. Um, whereas Super Meat Boy is like really fast, 
uh, this bit trip commander um, is definitely slower, but he can float in the air for an extended period of time to get you through like maybe some of the more precise jumps a little bit easier. Whereas Meat Boy, it would be diff more difficult, but you can get quicker, so you can get like the A plus rank. Yeah. Go, go, okay, okay. He'd be pretty useful here. He would be. I need to scratch my nose. <laughs> Scratching my nose. <laughs> That's what was holding me back. Now you look at it. There you go. <laughs> See, that, that's <laughs> that what it was. was. Oh, the golden chomp. That's a secret star, by the way. And, I, you know, I'm, when, when we were saying that, you know, this game babies you, uh, you know, I'm not saying that it completely babies you because you, you know, you look at a gold chomp, you go, oh, why is it gold? <laughs> you know, and you, Gee, I wonder why it's gold. You know, you think, you know, there's a star, so it's you're gonna, you're gonna get a, you know, power up and you get through it. So it's like, you know, it doesn't completely baby you, but, you know, well, even, I'm trying to defend it. But when it, the title of the level is Smash the Golden Chomp to get a star. Yeah, then it's like, all right, this is, uh, <laughs> a little unnecessary. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. I mean, but that, you know, that's kind of like an easier secret, but at least they don't, like, baby you and say, oh, hey, you know, this is a golden chomp, destroy it, and you'll get a, you know, a star. I'm just grateful that, you know, they give us a little bit. And these are big-ass amps. They are much bigger than the ones in Super Mario 64. They've evolved. They've evolved. Why did you evolve me, you <laughs> asshole? <laughs> because I love them. That's something else you should check out if you're checking out Ego Raptor. If you watched the last episode, check out the Pokey Awesome because that's amazing. Uh, something I figured, you know, because I don't think we've really talked about any of like the little things um, about Super Mario Sunshine, like because I don't know nearly as much about Sunshine or <laughs> Galaxy as I do uh, say Super Mario 64 or Sunshine. But uh, something I figured I would, can, you know, to connect the two. Um, is I feel like this star chip uh, business actually is kind of uh, what business? Oh, this, this star chip business. I feel like it was kind of inspired by an idea that was originally supposed to be in uh, Super Mario 64. Because in Big Boo's haunt in Super Mario 64, the Big Boo himself uh, winds up holding a star. Uh, but originally, he was supposed to hold a key. And if you look at little beta like screenshots, you can see that there was actually something kind of resembling uh, the star chip thing, where there was like five slots for you to get more keys. And uh, you know, Big Boo was yeah, Big Boo was supposed to drop a key. And I'm guessing that would open a door, which is kind of like the same thing, because, you know, by getting these, this basically opens a door to the next, you know, galaxy, if you wanted to say it like that. Um, I need to go down, right? I think I do. And they also have, I think, regular keys in this game every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah, they, they do have a regular keys, which might have actually been more what they were going for, but I like to think of the star chip thing being more towards what they were looking for. Mm -hmm. And I mean, obviously, it's not like it wouldn't create the star thing that would make you fly because that's not a space game, but like the same general concept of it letting you move forward once you find all five of them. But it, you know, I'm kind of glad that they didn't because the star chip thing, though kind of annoying sometimes. Uh, is a bit fresh, you know, in Galaxy. That's, you know, that's that's probably the main complaint between Galaxy 1 and Galaxy 2, is that Galaxy 2 feels like, you know, a lot like a rehash of Galaxy 1, you know, just with different things, with very few added things. And a lot of things that people praise Galaxy 1 for is its freshness. But, uh, actually, hold on, I think we're gonna end it off here, because we're at, like, 19 oh, okay. minutes. But, uh, I don't know what exactly we'll do in the next episode. It's up to Shadowy Productions, but I'm Paper Mario Guy. I'm Shadowy Productions, and we'll see you next time.